from over a decade of traditional TV, collaborating on over 25 short films and 5 web series, crazy motion graphics and visual effects on several promos and musical video contents, producing one musical, one short film, two feature length films, two Hi. So today we are trying to like clean up the office a little bit. There's so much dust from the Amatan of the season. So today me and Tadi, Tadi is behind the camera. Say hi, Tadi. To actually explain how YouTube changed my life with 471 subscribers, I'm going to actually put the uh, real number up. I'm not sure what the number is right now. Uh, I have to take you guys all the way back. My name is Samuel Oluwatosin Olatero. The truth is, I had one of the most amazing childhood. I can remember, you know, in the learning day, me and my brothers, we very competitive, uh, by the way. We have very, very great imagination. We have these little games whereby we do impressions of different actors from different scenes of movies. And then the person with the biggest meet, you take each strand and then you have different bets. And when somebody wins, you know, the person with the beef, then take a little slice of that and give it to the person that wins. It's just something really uh, fun, like I remember from then. And, you know, we're really happy. We don't have so much, but we're really, really, really happy. I could remember one night vividly when I was watching uh, television and uh, I was watching this particular bat scene and then I was looking at the TV and then it was a war scene, I think something from World War II and it was a very, very powerful story. It was in black and white and I saw the soldiers coming and then they were fighting, people were dying and it was so horrific, I was so, you know, I was a child. And then I saw some people, some other soldiers coming and then they were picking up um, these people that were being killed right when there was a real danger, they were, you know, dodging the bullets, they were carrying these, you know, people that were about to die, they were trying to save their life, you know. And then I asked my dad, I was like, dad, dad, so who are these people that are, you know, carrying these guys, trying to, like, save them? And then my dad says, they are doctors. So, I was like, hmm, doctors. And you know, that clicked for me that I have to be a doctor. And that's when the dream started. Like, to see, you have to be a medical doctor. Sorry, this feels like um, I need a little seat. Studied my whole life to be a doctor, went to school, I had a crush on a girl who was also going to be a doctor, so we go to school together, or, you know, got married, to a doctor, doctor. It was, so, it was just so brilliant. As God will have it, you know, long story entirely, I probably share all this data, but that didn't work out. And we had these moments where we're having like some really big issues in the family. And whenever I look at my dad, I, I look at his eyes, where well, he just looks back at me and he smiles. He has this very big smile and he just makes everything all right. And as a kid, that was everything I needed at that point. So really keep pushing, keep, you know, the doctor dream alive. I made some friends and then I had a little bit of experience with, you know, Photoshop and some, um, you know, graphics design and stuff. So, because I was, so I guess I was needed for like the website and a few things that they were trying to design them. So I joined this amazing group and it's wonderful people, fantastic, we're doing great things now. And then we, you know, we came together and then we started working together. We had this whole uh, setup, you know, where we were trying to like make uh, music videos in seven days. And that was like my film school because I left everything on that set. I carried light, I you know, bought a burger, I cleaned the bathroom. I did everything that is needed for, for the project, project to be successful. And days after that, we sat, you know, rotoscoping, editing, started learning a lot of new skills, started picking a lot of things up. And little did I know that, okay, well, this is where my journey is headed. And when it got to a period in my life, I had to, you know, take some time out and get a job because, of course, becoming a man, you need, you know, to feed yourself. All this time I still have in my mind, I'm still trying to like become a proper doctor. I feel like, okay, just get your jam, do all the stuff. And then long story, we'll still get all that later down the line. And over that period, you know, started you know, working professionally for over a decade right now, basically. And one of the things that I started figuring out is that I had so much talent around me. I have so much people with talent, so much people with dreams, so much people with so much to give around me and we don't have a platform, we don't have some place we can all come together and do something dope. So basically that's how Rise of the Saints came about. Have you ever heard of Morumi? Right. Yes. Virus type B. <laughs> to raise some money with zero net. I didn't have any naira in my, in my account. And all of my friends were just like determined to actually make this movie because we had a brilliant script, we had a brilliant idea, 
going to be fantastic. Let's go make this movie. And all we needed was just 400,000. Just raise 400K. And then really we can make a, few, a very, very good movie. A cinema wedding movie. It's going to be beautiful. We are so delusional, bro. Like the delusion right now for me right now is, is so much. And then basically, you know, we, we had that. And then we bootstrap, started raising this money. A project there, a small gig here, a small that here. Everybody bringing what they can. I remember Rosemary, a lot of people from the platform, Rusty, uh, Oba, people from the platform that just bootstrap, you know, everybody poured whatever they can into the project. And I remember a certain day on set, I was, it was at night and I needed some funds. I was really crashed. I made something like a 50K for like a little bit. And I called my dad, I was like, Dad, I'm in a very crazy spot where I need money. I need like 50,000 to make this movie. And it wasn't 30k or 50, 30, 50, 50, 50k, but I think it wasn't about the money anymore at that period because it was really mad at me because it felt like I left my dream of becoming a medical doctor and I wasn't focusing on my doing my jams, repeating the jams, and you know, focusing on the schools. And it was so mad at me that at that point in time, I that image that I have of him smiling at me and I feel like everything will be right and everything will be good just faded away. It just became straight up bro you're on your own like nobody's here for you it was so sad it was a very crazy period of my life and it was very challenging for me and everything had to pause because we didn't have any more funds to move forward, forward with the project accelerate came in and then it became became big and then we shot with better cameras better crew amazing people lawrence led beautiful fantastic actors like they I mean, we were able to raise a bit of fun to like you know make that happen when they saw the vision and the dream and the passion of the people behind it it was just a way of supporting us and saying you know well done if you want to see it it's like it's a, i'll put a link up there for you to be able to see see the movie but what i want to really focus on is that like for the past seven years i've been deep you know working doing different projects from short films you know, to full-length films, to different projects, you know, things that have gone to cinemas. It got to a point whereby it became a little bit monotonous for me, the work, instead of, because I, I spent over seven years, seven years after I was since now, I've been doing so much, I've been carried away with so much daily work, daily tasks, stuff to keep the light on, and that I've not been able to focus on the real core passion of storytelling. And it got to a point whereby I couldn't go on anymore. I couldn't continue with the daily tasks of, you know, the night to, to five work. Trust me, I love my job. I love doing what I do. I, they're amazing people. But it got to a point whereby the daily tasks of just, you know, waking up every morning, doing somebody else's work, I just become, and just everything that you have to do, you know, just, you know, just eat slowly, eat away your soul, your passion, your creativity. I want to tell beautiful stories. I want to tell big stories. I want to tell miniature stories, you know, you know that thumb finger, finger wrestling stories. I want to tell stories with Legos. I want to tell stories with green screens, I want to, tell, I want to do skits, I want to do a lot of things, I want to do animation, full length. I guess this takes me back, it takes me back to when I was young uh, and when I was looking at that TV and I didn't know what I was looking at. Uh, in retrospect, looking back at that very moment when I was looking at that film, what I saw was this job of a cinematographer, a job of a director that told, told a very, very good story. You know, that showed me the humanity in, that could be in a very, very crazy place like the trenches, like very, very crazy world. Uh, and the director that filmed that, I don't know what that film is exactly. I still have the picture in my mind, but I, I can't really tell you. I, I don't know where that film is from or where that footage is from. The director, the cinematographer, the way they captured that very moment, it was so real that at that point, I felt like what I wanted to do was you know, to become that you know, medical doctor. You know, when I asked my dad, who, who are these people? Doctors. So, but what I saw was the filmmaking was the ability to convey a message, to inspire, to, to really do, you know, great things from just the lens of the camera. And God has a very, very amazing way of nudging you to your part, even when you presently think, think things are not going the right way, you know. For me, at this point in time, it's a very tough decision not to like just run back to 95 because it's very, very comfortable for me. I have opportunities, I have way more, you know, doors are knocking, offers, but, but I'm putting aside just to try this out. 
And the reason why I said YouTube has changed my life is because this is a platform where all of that is possible, where the format that I tell the stories is possible because you have your own audience who, who would love this, by the way. By the way, if you love our channel, please subscribe. It's right there. You can always support us. But YouTube is that platform where you can post all these things. So I can put my shots, I can put my full-length films, I can put my you know, skits with my friends, I can put the comedy series, different ideas that we have. I can do the finger stories I want to do. I want to tell characters with our fingers. We walk across the room. Like you do all those kind of really nice niche things that are lost in the heart of storytelling nowadays. And I've been inspired because YouTube is the platform right now where that seems very, very possible. To support me and the group and the amazing people that are behind me right now, as you can see, uh, making this happen to support us please subscribe like i said like and please comment tell us what you want to see engage with us these are real people these are people that really want to collaborate and do great stuff we are ready to work with you actors cinematographers anybody that wants to join us want to do great stuff we feel like here is where we can make that happen and share the revenue and you know share the dividend which is um, one thing that I can't wait to do. I can't wait till I have that first time I have that big check and you know give everybody that has worked on you know the platform something where we'll be like you know this is ours. Uh, it's a new way of thinking filmmaking. It's a new way of making money. This is twenty twenty four, and if there's anything that I want you to take from this is that right now I feel like even things are not that great. You know things are tough because I've made that very very you know strange and that's you know difficult to move i feel like i'm i'm that old guy now looking back at myself as a young kid and smiling telling that kid everything will be all right